What's going on everybody? It's me, Ren, with two N's, your favorite little boy in the whole wide world. And let me tell you something straight off the bat. I'm making this video for me as much as I'm making it for you. Because on May 18th, Bungie is going to be streaming the gameplay reveal for Destiny 2. And as of this moment, I'm looking forward to Destiny 2, but I'm not exactly excited. CG trailers aren't enough to get me pumped up. But after the gameplay reveal, all bets are off. I might be more pumped than a newborn's mom's nipple. But there's also a very low chance that the gameplay reveal won't do anything for me. Maybe I'll be nonplussed by it, maybe I won't care, maybe I won't be excited for the game at all. But I'm getting off track. I live by an expression that I made up. No one else thought of this before me. I came up with this expression all by myself. Honest. And that expression is, hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. And if you don't believe me that I did make that up, I will take a lie detector test here on my channel to prove it. That's what this video is all about, preparing both me and you for the worst. Destiny 2 is probably going to be the only other game that I buy this year. I bought Outlast 2 a couple weeks ago, and I'll be making a video about that shortly. But if you know me even a little bit, you'll know that I'm a big ol' sucker for Destiny. So on May 18th, here's what's going to happen. Deej, Luke Smith, and someone else are going to be talking to us. Luke Smith's going to be playing the game, walking us through it, showing us what's new, what's cool, and most likely, the game's going to look absolutely awesome. From that point onward, we're going to be promised a lot of things. I imagine that the marketing will involve saying certain things like, yeah, we know Destiny 1 was a bit rough, but we promise, Destiny 2 won't be like that. It's going to have a ton of content on day one, and we got a brand new engine here that we built from scratch. We're sorry that we let you down, but this time we won't. Honest, we promise. Bungie and Activision are gonna be telling us exactly what we wanna hear. Vidox are gonna come out saying similar things, showing us new features that Destiny 1 lacked, that people asked for on launch day. They'll be telling us that Destiny 2 is gonna overshadow Destiny 1 in every single way. And people, especially big time YouTubers like True Vanguard and Datto and Mtash, are gonna be praising all these changes so much. They're gonna be saying things like, oh my god, look at this guys, Bungie, listen to us. This is what we've always wanted for three years. This is what we need. This is gonna be great. And then IGN and GameSpot are gonna tell you, this is it. This is gonna be the game of the century. This is the game Bungie's always wanted to make. This is the game you'll tell your grandkids about. No, fuck that. You'll be playing it with your grandkids, because the game's gonna be that good. 50 years from now, you'll still be fucking playing it. All your friends are gonna be like, hey, I just pre- They're gonna call you. Hey, I just pre-ordered Destiny 2. It looks pretty good. You should get it too, because everyone you've ever known, including your dead grandmother, who died in a car crash, has already pre-ordered the game. And then it's gonna win hundreds of E3 awards, as if those actually mean anything. But you know what? Let me tell you something really important here. Excitement almost always leads to disappointment. They're gonna hype this thing up like nobody's business, because this game has to do well. Call of Duty isn't doing as well as it used to. Same goes for World of Warcraft. That game's kind of been waning off for a few years. It's still popular, but whatever. And Guitar Hero is pretty much dead. Activision needs this thing to be a hit, because currently, there are four separate studios working on this game, which is possibly well over a thousand employees that have been added to the budget of this game. That's about $50,000 per person per year. I, of course, I'm estimating and speculating a little bit with those numbers. On top of the two to $300 million in marketing that they're probably gonna spend, that's a lot of money on the line. They're gonna wanna make damn sure that absolutely everybody is talking about this game. And with that in mind, just remember, just remember as we're getting told a bunch of exciting information about a game that we wanna play, that at the end of the day, Activision really, really just wants your money. But on the other hand, I feel like Bungie is genuinely passionate about the games they make. They want to make a good game more than anything else. But Bungie also has a history of being far too ambitious with their games. Way too ambitious for their own good. I mean, just take a look at Halo 2. You learn about the development cycle of that game and it was a disaster because they got too overambitious. And most recently, the same thing happened to an extent with Destiny 1. It is entirely possible that Destiny 2 could also suffer from Bungie's overambition. But then I know what you're thinking. You're saying to me, Ren, this game was supposed to come out in 2016, but it got delayed an entire year. 
Surely, that extra year of development would mean that this game should be incredible. And to that I say that Destiny 1 was supposed to come out in 2013, but that got delayed an entire year, because they had to scrap basically the entire game. What if something similar happens again? I'm not saying it will, I'm just saying you should be prepared in case it does. And to that you say, but Ren, Bungie would certainly learn from their past mistakes. I would then refer you to earlier in this video where I talked about Bungie's overambition. Then you also think in yourself, okay Ren, this game has to be good because they've got four studios working on this piece, trying to bring Bungie's vision to life. To that, I say four studios is possibly well over 1,000 people. That is a lot of people with a lot of differing opinions. Everyone's gonna have their own idea of how the game should be, and on top of that, it's gotta be a pain in the ass to be the lead designer of this game and have to communicate with three other studios. Every change, every tweak, every iteration, every new idea, every bug, every piece of valuable information would have to go through so many different channels, so many different hands to get to where it needs to go. Working on this game, I can only imagine the pressure on the developers. It's gotta be so stressful, so messy. There's no way to make an experience like that go smoothly. There just isn't. There's That's so many people. There's so much going on, so much to worry about. It's gotta be a madhouse over there. Now, I'm only speculating, of course, but more than anything, I want Destiny 2 to be good. That's all I want. I love Destiny 1, but it's so flawed. In some ways, that game is downright terrible. But it's still a fucking fantastic game. And if they do get Destiny 2 right, then I'm gonna get myself a catheter, break up with my girlfriend, and have my dog put to sleep. Because I'll be playing Destiny 2 until I'm dead. I've also got a bad feeling that Gaul won't be a very memorable villain. It's possible that we just get a real basic game starts tutorial, tower gets destroyed, we rebuild our forces, get some new crap, get some new weapons, take the tower back, and then we grind out our characters until we're high enough level to do the raid, and then we kill Gaul that way. But I hope I'm wrong. I really, really do. But if I am right, and they mess this up again, and give us another lackluster game, then I'm ready. I am prepared for that. As we get bombarded with Vidox and interviews and exciting looking new features, just try to temper your expectations. Or as my boy Larry does, curb them. Use critical thought. Take all of the information you're given with a grain of salt. Marketing is all about taking a cool part of a game and extrapolating that cool thing and expanding it to be way more than it actually is so that it looks awesome and that you buy it. So just think, when they're showing us a new feature, go, yeah, that does look like a really cool feature. I'm excited to see how it turns out once I actually play the game. Reserve all your judgment until you've put your hands on the thing, because I've been around for a little while. I'm 25 years old right now. I used to read, every month I'd read the official Xbox magazine, reading about everything getting overhyped, even back then it was still a thing. And the games industry has disappointed me countless times. And I've learned that getting too excited for any game, no matter how good the game actually is, it's usually a death sentence for that game. So just try to stay cool, stay critical, and be patient. But that's all I got for this video. I plan on trying to make as many videos as possible this week. You won't see them until next week, but I do have a surgery on May 11th, because it turns out I have gall stones. So they gotta remove my gall bladder. Unfortunately, they couldn't find a donor to replace my gall bladder, because it doesn't work that way. They don't do that. Anyway, remember to subscribe. Let's see if we can let's see if we can hit 150 subscribers this week. That would really help me out. Seriously will help this channel and it might even destroy all my gallstones. We'll never know until we see it. So let's make it happen, people. One last thing real quick. Tweet this video out to whoever it might be relevant to. Been making videos for trueachievements.com. Playlist of my work is down in the description as always. Provided everything goes well with the surgery, I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye.